But I, I think now that we have a quorum, uh, we can start getting ready for our lightning pitches. Uh, these are being recorded. And so the goal will be that we'll all do our five minute pitches for the groups, uh, and then they will be shared out to the Shaping EDU community for some community voting um, so that the entire community can contribute, give feedback, um, as well as vote on what they would like to see the the priorities for shaping EDU to be for the upcoming year. Um, but also it doesn't mean that we can't do many of the other things that you shared and that you came up with and the 30 others. And we would never want to uh, stop people from doing awesome work. We just want to uh, put put some, some stakes in the ground and say, this is what shaping EDU as a community will focus on. So with that being said, who wants to start actually, why don't I start and I will put forth the pitches that, and then I'll relinquish it over to all of you, of the few groups that didn't, that didn't come and that were from yesterday, just as a recap. Uh, and then we'll move on to uh, some everyone else's presentations. So I am just going to, I actually don't have a share option. Oh, there, share. All right, and I'm going to share my desktop. And I'm going to share it. All right. So I are is everyone seeing uh, the at the unconference we want to? It looks like you have to go up. Each individual um, participant needs to go up to where it says view options um, and change it from viewing Karina's screen to viewing Heather's screen, which is super cool. I didn't know that was possible. That's why I'm here. Thanks, Seth. All right, so I'm gonna start with the student agency group. And one of the big things that that group came out with was this idea of creating a Slack channel and then a corresponding Google Doc where students can share what their student manifesto or their student set of common uh, things that they expect from their university experience and from their professors. Uh, and so the idea would be that we would put that we as administrators um, would and, and faculty would would sort of be able to watch this unfold, but really it would be a student owned product from Shaping EDU that goes out to say, you know, this is a, a, a collection of things that students expect from their higher ed experience. Um, and so that is the, the student agency. There was a number of other things like toolkits. Um, but I think that that was the, the main thing that that group wanted to is what better for student agency than to allow the students to take over and to actually share what they want from their education. So that's uh, for the student agency group. Group number two uh, was the data group, the ethical use of data group. They actually already created a web page that talks about what we are collecting as universities and they're looking for people to contribute what are we collecting. Uh, they want to um, also have how we're protecting those things and the different things that our university are, is doing, but also what we're giving and the idea that what are we giving back and what agency are we giving back to the students that we're collecting this info from or resources um, that help them become better stewards of their own data or what kind of records are we providing for them of what we're collecting. So that is what the data group came up with. They've actually already published this web page. It is in the Shaping EDU 2020. Uh, they've already posted a link there. So I encourage all of you to go and look at their web page um, and they'd love to, to build it out more. And then the third group um, was the basic needs, meeting the basic needs of the student. And what they wanted to do was create a toolkit for individuals uh, to understand how universities and, and higher education and educational institutions can meet the human needs of their students, um, as well as um, the, this idea of providing tools for peer mentoring. So this group really wanted to 
yeah, similarly to some of the other groups, create a series of tools, a series of stories, um, a series of different options for, for people to, and guidelines for people to actually implement some strategies for attending to the human needs of their students and being more attentive to those. So those are the three that were not represented today in breakout groups. Um, and then Ruben, what was, the, what was the outcome piece from, is Ruben on the line? Uh, yes, I'm here. Um, from the Black Swans, I figured since you were here, you could uh, you could go through what the outcome piece was for the creation for the Black Swans, um, just quickly, uh, so that that one is also represented. Thank you. So very uh, very very quickly, uh, the group came up with a mission statement for the Institute for Advanced Play. And uh, the mission statement is integrated play that guides you to live out your purpose as a creative, transforming agent in tomorrow's culture. Uh, then also an approach. This university uses a social constructionism approach, which recognizes the co-creative nature of learning and the value of community. And then from there on out, uh, the group put together a whole series of materials discussing the academic curriculum structure and content. Uh, that includes uh, the program structure, the program format, delivery model, etc., accreditation. And at this point, what the group has decided to do is to continue to meet online in Slack. So as to both produce a final version of this, something that could be used, if you will, as a pitch that could be taken to a grants director, so as to get funding for the institute, but also more importantly, as a product for the community something that would outline, okay, so this was the thinking process that led to the uh, whole, whole development of this. In other words, how to, how to use this to uh, start thinking about how to make anti-fragile academic institutions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ruben, for your uh, outline there. And so um, if I'm just hearing you correctly, the group is going to produce a a pitch deck and a, re a report of what you're doing. And the idea would be to produce some sort of pitch deck for funding for this Institute of Advanced Play, correct? Correct. As a, as a sample of, you know, how, what does the, something that's been designed around anti-fragility look like at the end of the game? Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. So of our groups that met today, who would like to present first? Or should I just pick someone? I, I can, we can start at the, <laughs> at number seven. Um, oh. Thanks, Jenna, so, do you wanna share anything on the screen? Um, no, I'd say let's stick with Karina's. Um, we talked about three main purposes of higher education. Um, the first one is to teach and train people for today. Um, so getting people ready for jobs or better jobs or something but the stuff that's right now. Um, the second one is to actively uh, curate um, and create new knowledge. So building um, sources of expertise and exploration that can be finding out new things or collecting new things um, or maintaining stuff that's already there. And the third one was to get um, to create an environment where students can get used to things like exponential change and um, and making a way to understand how to look at a whole system and see how different parts would um, impact that. So what we talked about as an action item was to um, identify problems or questions where we can create a systems thinking process around it. Um, we use the example of the fold it, that protein folding game um, that helped identify ways that proteins were folding faster than researchers could figure them out and um, talked about trying to get more people around a problem. So creating this exponential response of putting a problem or a, a scenario in front of larger groups and introducing new things to it. Um, the example we talked about 
was one from a colleague of mine who would bring up um, for the March Madness uh, basketball thing that happens every year. He would set up this bracket and then as a thought exercise, encourage people to think of what would happen if this team's star player got injured or if this school had to shut down or something like that. Um, so the idea of presenting a system or a problem and then saying, okay, what's going to happen if we throw this wrench into it? Um, basically building off of uh, the, the idea that what you learn in school tends to be really sterile and nice and clean. And then when you go out to the real world, that's not how it works. So if we could be teaching people how to think through real world problems and, you know, the wrench getting thrown in a system. Awesome. So what I'm hearing is uh, sort of a, sort of like a, a series of challenges that we might put out for, for sort of group response. And would this be students to respond to or, or anyone? Uh, anyone. The the more people we could get around the problem or the system, the better uh, the solution will be. So the idea is to put something there and get as many different viewpoints, um, students, faculty, administrators, people that are associated with education at all, um, get as many viewpoints around it as we can and be able to, you know, Ruben mentioned creating anti-fragile um, environments. If we can get giant groups around problems um, and make it diverse, then we can start seeing and preparing for things that smaller groups wouldn't have seen. Awesome. Well, that sounds great. So sort of these, these problems, challenges for the world. Mm -hmm. All right, so next we've got, uh, moving on to our next group, we've got the either the adult learning or the immersive learning group. Which group uh, would like to go first? I'm gonna go with whoever, oh, I see un Emery has unmuted himself. Is that what happened? <laughs> I have unmuted myself. I can go, I guess. We ready to go? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna share my screen because uh, we, Karina did an absolutely wonderful job of, um, capturing um, our ideas here. Hold on just a second, if I can, uh, if I can pull this up. Every, everybody has my screen? Hold on. We all have to go up to the top and choose Emery from our view options over Karina. So just a uh, Okay, let me know when everybody's there. I think we're, I think we're at, uh, I think we're good, Emery. We're good. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll start to pitch uh, about my colleagues promise that they have my back here. So we had an absolutely wonderful discussion and thank you, Becky, Maya and Victor and, and Karina for just everything pulling us together. Our pitch is to do a toolkit for storytelling and student agency. Uh, we really think that shaping EDU has to not just address current issues in higher education, but also needs to be forward thinking and think about how XR and all related immersive technologies are going to transform learning both in K-12 and in higher education. So this toolkit would focus on a couple of areas on content creation and engagement in XR and it addresses themes of storytelling which we've heard we heard this morning we heard yesterday uh, student engagement and and also notions of student play and learning and while storytelling is really important, I think the way that it's been framed now is for the world that we're in now, but we really need to think about the world of the future. And storytelling is not just going to be creating documentary videos, creating websites. It's going to be about creating experiences. It's going to be about students being in virtual experiences, but also learning how to create virtual experiences. So this toolkit would provide um, a number of resources for, for everyone, really, for faculty.
equity for innovation centers, for IT, for libraries, for labs, and for students and even the ed tech community. And it would be a guide that would be starting at the very early entry point of even using Google Tour Creator, because in actual fact with XR, the barrier is very low to get started. Part of it is just fear of how do you get started or not knowing how to get started. And then moving on to there to the tools for success, what equipment you use, resources, strategies, workspaces, and then address questions such as why XR, the examples of what is possible, Possible, going through the nuts and bolts of this. Yes, yeah, sanitation is an issue with this, as we know. It's always been an issue. It's even more an issue now. But it's also other issues, too. It's issues of access. Students don't have the technology at home. Do students always have to come to a lab, or can they check stuff out? Um, and the kind of tools that they could use for exploration. And, and ultimately, as we begin to do this, to even to reflect on the evaluation of success. How, how is this successful? Where is it successful? So what we'd like to see is even kind of a, a crowdsourcing here of different resources of people sharing ideas, sharing experiences, what works, what doesn't work. Um, we see this taking a number of forms. Um, it should be a repository and yeah, it has to live on a website in part. Sad to say, I hate that, but it's gotta, we've got to go with the tools that we have, but we're not just going to do that. We also want to have some meetings and all space VR so that people are in the technology, they are using it, we're going to start having these meetings regularly and bring students in. We thought all space VR is probably the best because that's probably the one social VR thing that everybody has done and um, to go from there and to begin to share resources. So I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues and let them add some stuff. So, Awesome. Thanks, Emery. Uh, Maya, Vicki, Victor, you want to add some? Yeah, um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yep. One of the things that we talked about um, as different aspects or dimensions of this toolkit would, um, was the importance of um, sharing your story. Um, so pretty much there's always power when, pe when, when people are thinking of um, you know, getting involved with XR, VR, um, there's always power when, you, when people share their story or experiences or how VR are um, all immersive technologies have helped them. So what, that's one of the things we're really considering, um, kind of like a step-by-step -step toolkit, uh, starting with the why, why would they want to get involved with, with, with XR um, and other immersive um, technologies, and then going into um, use cases before even talking about the cost or the barriers of entry, we want to make sure that people understand the why and also um, get to connect with their heart first before their brain. So really, um, we're going to be developing this around those um, concepts as well. That's really good, Victor. Thanks. And Maya, why don't you talk a little bit about the immersive storytelling, because you're the expert on this. Yeah, I think that we felt that storytelling and agency is the two things that go together. And the reason we are so interested in storytelling, because we are interested in users as creators as creators, which means that when you're creating a story, you don't need, you're not only checking out the boxes or even, um, you know, having to read something and being able to answer questions about it. You have to make so many, ultimately, so many decisions about how to tell that story, which is a very uh, much more involved process and, and process where students have to critically reflect on, you know, how, what, what makes this experience. Uh, how do they want to share it? How do they want to tell the story? And in 3D environments, they actually get to use um, space, the entire space to do so. So we felt that, you know, that these are two things that are ultimately both empowering and enabling and giving students a new digital tool set um, in terms of um, creating this uh, and exercising digital uh, fluency in these spaces, similarly to, you know, how we, um, it, you know, in a way for them to understand, in a way for uh, to them to understand the, the complexity of what XR allows and relates to ethical issues, the only way to do so is by ultimately being a creator. And so, you know, these are the two, the reason we kind of focus on that is we felt that these are the two things that actually will drive uh, this next generation of, of students, um, of their engagement with um, the world and, um, extra in general. 
And and related to that in the digital fluency um, aspect, just what asking the questions and, and helping people to understand what it means to embody a virtual being in a virtual space. Because um, yeah, I think that's absolutely. only going to become more prevalent as social VR becomes yeah. uh, more to our forefront. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you to the Immersive Learning Group. So they're going to create a tool, toolkit for storytelling and student agency. And they're all going to help us uh, be in old space VR and uh, meet up there. And uh, maybe maybe that's actually a good thing. We'll let Sam know that maybe we should have uh, one of the Shaping EDU live Shaping EDUs in old space VR. Yes, yes we so should. Actually, okay. We actually, the, as part of the Immersive Learning Project, um, uh, our sort of our final component to that is for all of us to meet in our space VR yeah. and share some examples. So um, that's already built in and we hope to invite everybody very soon. But I think that going forward, we definitely, as part of this toolkit, this toolkit. We, uh, we absolutely uh, feel it's necessary for us to be in these spaces. Yeah. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much to the Immersive Learning Group. Yeah, thank you. I got the most amazing colleagues here. The guys were great. <laughs> awesome. All right, uh, so Emory, I'm going to ask you to stop sharing your screen so that the uh, last group, the Adult Learning Human Connection Workforce Group, can can uh, to bring us on home. Hey, guys. Um, Laura, can you actually share your screen? Because I think that you have our um, thing that you made that is so beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. No, okay, I everyone, when Lara's screen is shared, we all go to view and we look at Lara's screen just so that uh, when she comes up. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So um, we talked a lot about um, this thing that we'd like to create. It's called StoryBank. Um, story Bank is your stories, humanizing learning practice, um, learning and teaching practice. And I think that that's a really important distinction that we made. Um, story Bank is a repository. It's a place um, for people to share their stories with regards to lots of different things in education. Um, these are things where you can share a story that is written. You can share a story that is in video format, um, a really something that is searchable, something that People can go, um, their story is there, and whether that's through our categorizations or through um, tags and things like that, that really allow people to search for something, say that I wanna know about, I'm, I'm an instructional designer and I wanna know about somebody's lived experience using Canvas. I wanna learn about something's, somebody's lived experience using Slack in a classroom setting. Um, I can look for those things and um, I see what people's experiences are, um, really highlighting that lived experience. Um, yes, so, um, and that's, that's the stories that are a complete arc of what is, what has been and what will be. Um, and then, you know, things that are, are in process as well. Um, some examples that we have here, um, Alex was sharing with us yesterday um, some work that she's doing around teaching online educators and the things that she does um, that as an online educator that are really humanizing and creating that connection to her students. Um, further, there is um, another idea that we had that is came stemmed from a panel that Anita and I sat on on as students yesterday um, talking to staff about our online experience and how impactful that could be to have not waited for some of us five years, for some of us two years to sit in front of someone and say, this is what we're going through, talking to instructional designers and success coaches. To have those things available that they can go online to a website and find these things in this story bank. I don't know if anybody else has, I saw some chat happening. Um, so yeah, making that, um, yeah, um, emphasizing the, the metaphor of the bank. Um, this is something that everybody's making deposits to and is able to make withdrawals from and um, make it a, not a, school specific, not a shaping EDU specific, but something that is really accessible um, to students 
educators and designers. Yeah, that's awesome. Yay. All right. So I, I've heard here, anybody else from that, that group um, want to, to contribute anything before we go back to Karina to just give us a, a quick overview of what she's seeing. Um, and then after that, I will do ask others to share just any quick reflections that people have on, on the conference. Um, and then we'll, we'll do a quick wrap up. So any, any questions on the, the, the bank? No. All right. So I'm going to hand it over to Karina, who has been drawing in real time uh, and to tell the story of all the storytelling things that have been coming up. I see some connections between, you know, the toolkit for storytelling and then storing those stories in the story bank, which is pretty awesome. And you can start to, to put things together here. So that sounds pretty exciting. Yeah. Thanks, Heather. Um, you the, th the thing that's really exciting that I'm seeing is, like you said, all the connections. So, and also after, you know, three years of everybody working together, seeing how the, the ideas have really become, have shaped into actual tools and um, frameworks and now these plans for toolkits for people to be using. So um, the things that I'm seeing there's this wonderful um, connection between the lived experience that was highlighted down here in the story bank um, and kind of connecting that in my mind up here to the meeting, meeting basic human needs and um, really seeing people as a, as a whole person, especially that um, can be challenging and online. So thinking about, um, okay, I'm not alone in this, building those relationships, here's resources that you might find useful and mentoring. And then um, the uh, another connection I noticed was between um, the purpose of higher ed and the unknown futures. Both of those are very systems thinking oriented and um, thinking uh, whether it's scenarios or um, just having people and resources like Ruben who will throw those wrenches in to get us to practice thinking about what we might do um, when the wrench actually hits, uh, thinking really systemically and at scale, um, which brings me to the potential for the immersive, immersive learning, um, you know, the potential for the VR for people to be tuning in everywhere and having these um, tools for understanding not only in situ at the institution, here's um, skills, here's um, ways to build digital fluency, and also here's how to be a really good human in both spaces. Um, and then uh, the ethics around that will slide on down to um, ethical use of data and transparency, which pulls in the student agency, you know, really understanding clearly um, where all parties are coming from. As people, we often expect others to be able to read our minds and uh, that doesn't happen. So being able to clearly tell this story of here's the data we're collecting, why, here's the benefits you get, and it really is because um, we want to protect and support students. And then um, also from the student here's what we expect from education and here's what we're going to stand up and own as well. And then being able to see that in that transparent um, format, I just think is absolutely phenomenal. So whole system or whole person, um, systems thinking, um, the play was kind of integrated in, you know, experimentation um, and creating spaces in education that support that kind of exploration. So uh, that's kind of my on the fly summary of what I was hearing. Hopefully that made sense to you all, but I'm just jazzed. Karina, that was pretty phenomenal. I would say that you you really brought actually your drawing full circle because as students start to um, take more agency and more ownership of their education, then they actually change the system. 
right? So then you actually have created a whole cyclical space um, for this all to happen. So I absolutely agree. And, and thank you so much for all of your drawings and all of your interpretation and summaries. Um, I, I'm watching the chat go by and there's just so much love in the chat for all of the work that you've done. Um, yeah, so people are like, impressive, excellent. Um, so, I, and I wanna echo that. Um, so just as we are wrapping up here, um, would any, does anybody have any reflections they'd like to share with the group um, about this whole experience? I know it's been, everybody who's here, I'd like to appreciate so much for rolling with all the punches, um, being flexible, being accommodating. And I think that um, this has been a really exceptional experience. Um, and as Sam, to echo Sam's words this morning, that we'll all talk about this and reflect on this in a few months and see what such an exceptional um, what such an exceptional work has happened here and what such an exceptional experience this was to go through together. So anybody have any reflections they'd like to share with the group? Well, you all know I never have anything to say, so I'm going to be the first to not say any of it. Uh, first of all, it's been incredible just watching this community roll with the punches. You all know from listening to me talk that I try to do this kind of blended online, on-site stuff all the time and have people like I've got the wonderful two students with me here and you're all over the place. It's just been a phenomenal learning experience to see what happens in time of crisis. So hats off to Ruben and the Black Swan group for making us think about that thing. And hats off to all of us for responding to this Black Swan in such an effective way. I will be reflecting and writing on this for days, weeks, and months to come. Uh, at a more personal level in terms of these topics we just looked at, I am blown away by how close we are in terms of the projects we came up with. The three of us sitting here kept nodding our heads every time somebody said, it's about storytelling, it's about documenting this. That obviously was at the heart of the presentation Megan gave on our behalf. Uh, no matter which way this particular shark tank goes, no matter what project gets chosen, I hope that we will all try to wrap in that the elements that we put here of documenting our stories, creating new stories, sharing them, and continuing to ask people to join our community. One of the underlying themes that we talked about, and I think Megan made this clear, was we see this as a way not only to document and start new things, but to invite others in by saying, we're doing this, what are you doing? And if you wanna play with us, let's play together. So let me stop there. You two with me. What reflections do you want to offer along the same lines? Please, please, ah, they're, they're trying I'm to good. on me. I'm good. <laughs> oh, really? What's, what's one thing you took away from it? having experienced the way this conference morphed from online to on-site to all over the damn world? Yeah, I mean, I sort of got the opinion, or I guess the feeling that um, you guys appreciated hearing from students. And we did. I'm really lucky that I got to be one of those voices and Megan as well. I mean, it was really great to connect with somebody that's been in a really similar um, program on different parts of the country, you know, and from different companies. And so thank you for including me. And I've learned a lot and I will be taking a lot of this back to the students that I work with. I actually have four, I think right now that um, are at ASU online that work with me and I see them pretty much every day. So. <laughs> There'll be a lot of this getting spread um, beyond this conference. I turn to you, this, uh, a focus question for you, Trevor, so people can see this. Trevor was telling me that he's, he's starting to work on his advanced education on education itself. What are you walking away from this conference with in terms of something you can pull into the research that you're going to be doing? I think just about um, having a, uh, I think just about having a broader perspective on all the issues that are at the forefront and in the future of education and how to really um, I guess consider the, all those in my research and in, in setting a good direction that will push the boundaries on those things. So that's sort of a more a more holistic view of that. Yeah. So Sam, Rena, Laura, Lev, Heather, everybody else who who brought us together and gave us a sharing space. You are changing the world, man. Thank you. Thank you to Thank all you. of you. Um, Sam has joined us again. She's, I believe she just came back in the room, um, but I, I still want to keep it open. I know that that, that that group got a chance to share. Is there anybody else who'd like to share their uh, reflections? Yes, Heather, I would like to share. This is Victor. I want to say thank you. Thank you for you guys organizing this amazing conference um, beyond all the odds. <laughs> and um, you know, just staying through the course and um, bringing all this 
thought leaders and doers and shapers in one place. I personally have learned, um, again, the, the value of collaboration and how, um, you know, even, even though we see some, some, we see things differently from different perspectives, but um, coming, coming back together to work together for the common good. And, um, you know, also as, as a student it has helped me to reflect on my own educational journey, um, even sitting on the panel. And uh, I, I was, I used the example of, um, you know, the rigor that students have to go through and the experience and the perseverance that you get from school. It's not just the, you know, um, it's not just the degree or the skills you get, but it's the character formation. And um, just like, you know, someone wants to learn how to ride a bicycle. It's the same. You, you sometimes you fall, you make mistakes. You know, but just keep going, and then eventually you will learn how to ride the bicycle. Same with our educational journey as students. You know, um, so I encourage all the students also just to keep going. Uh, you might fall, you might you might get tired, but um, just dust yourself and keep going. Awesome. Thank you so much, Victor. All right, I think we can take one more if somebody wants to uh, to, to to shout out here, um, and then we'll um, if 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 Sam is able, we'll kick it over to Sam to to thank everyone and, and wrap this all up. I'd like to jump in if if I if that's cool. Um, hey, I'm, I'm John Richter. I, I'm the president and CEO of the Immersive Learning Research Network, and. Uh, <clears throat> Tried to have been involved, but there's been a lot of massive uh, fluctuations with us, just like everybody in the past few days. Um, but I work here in Montana with the Flathead uh, natives uh, on the reservation. I'm an ally, uh, helping them with agile design and creating uh, culturally responsive uh, design uh, patterns and working with them on environmental science and all sorts of things. And uh, the indigenous research model of working with the community where uh, you do research about the right kinds of questions and the community, the elders are the ones that kind of tell you, it, they give you the direction of, of what's good for the community. The youth are though working on agile learning principles in quick response on this bigger arc of the community design research. So we gather evidence and we uh, make stories uh, and we talk about and use this this technology and media that um, are, are connected to the people and the people are directly connected to the land so it's um, it's kind of a fun thing but that's that's that stuff I think the indigenous reason I'm going to try to upload it to the uh, to the slack there um, after I, after I, after I talk, but that's the flathead stuff, and I, I think that relates here in a certain sense for the ethics and the values of making this important to the communities and re being responsive to nature and looking at things in terms of systems and interconnectedness. Uh, even though you're doing the fast-paced scanning of all of the um, the quickly emerging, quickly changing near future with AI and and medicine and uh, you know. VR and AR, et cetera. So I'll put that aside and talk about the VR and AR, et cetera. In the last couple of days, I'm shaking because I'm, I'm, I'm telling some people we've kept this internal. In the last couple of days, we, we're, we're not going to be having our conference in California. We're going all online and into a virtual environment. And uh, iLearn is an open science, open design network where we're trying to work together on big issues like climate change and like, like things we're doing. So because we're the Immersive Lear Learning Research Network, we're, we're student-centered because we're learner-centered. And uh, we're trying to amass, a, we have a knowledge base uh, that we've been creating and, and released in about a month um, with uh, Maya Georgieva and Emery Craig, who you all know, uh, will be releasing a, uh, scanning report much like shaping edu and uh paul and sam have been helping us um yeah. from the beginning and helping co-lead and facilitate all of this stuff and they're we're eternally super grateful for them so i learn feels kind of connected to shaping edu and you guys as students 
And so we're going online into an all virtual reality conference at the end of June. And we've got some time to prepare. Uh, we're we're going to announce it here soon in a week. Please don't tweet that or you know, <laughs> yet. Because we have to, the board has to sign a few papers first. Uh, <laughs> um, but we'd like you guys to be involved, all of Shaping EDU and the students. Uh, we'd like to, to integrate some of the work you're doing and the incredible community that's here with the educational technology, your focus on the future, the connections with all these different universities. Like iLearn would love to collaborate with Shaping EDU on, on a partnership to, to, to take advantage of this black swan that's come out of the lake <laughs> and uh, here we go. So we feel like we're, 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 we're partnering with uh, educators in VR, which is a group that just had a, an on, a virtual reality summit with over 170 presenters and it went around the clock. So like take a look at educators in VR. So anyways, um, thank you for your wonderful uh, event here. I, I participated as much as I could and lurked and made some comments and things, but uh, this is this is fantastic. I love the unconference format, and I think I think this is a beautiful use of uh, of of educational expertise. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. Yeah. <laughs> And so I am going to uh, say thank you to everyone, um, and I'm going to hand it back to Sam to, 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 to thank all of the people who made this a reality and to, to sign us off, to give us that in on the way that I, I feel like only Sam can. Sam always uh, has the, the, the thing to say to, to bring it all home. So Sam, handing it back over to you. Thank you. Well, come on home. Um, Wow, uh, what a tremendous um, past two days that we've spent together. I know some of us in and out, including myself, of the discussions and our minds and our hearts, of course, pulled in different directions the entire time. But the fact of the matter that we were able to sort of push through, work together, and find a way to have these conversations and to use what's happening in the world as sort of a springboard to extend them out into the unknown, um, it's simply amazing. So I want to applaud each and every one of you for your willingness and your energy to stick it out. I think it's truly a testament to this community and how active people are. Um, no, it's, it's never been more um, prominent um, just how action oriented and, and, and what doers and drivers this group of dreamers is. Um, and so I'm incredibly grateful. Um, I wanna give out some specific thanks to just a handful of people, although um, I really wish that I could um, individually, you know, thank each and each, I wanna individually thank each and every one of you and I hope to have these conversations. Um, I really wanna first thank um, Lara Geringer, um, our community engagement manager and content strategist for just being a tireless, um, and passionate, um, a human in terms of advancing all this planning and all of this work, working with students, working with um, facilitators and drafting communications and just everything that you could possibly imagine. So thank you so much, Lara. Um, I wanna thank um, Aaron Morrow, who is our event coordinator at UTO, who not only planned this event, but plans all events that we host um, at the University Technology Office, ASU and beyond, who has been working on this event for, gosh, the better part of like nine months, right? Uh, to, to bring everything together and just how much she had to flex and be responsive in this live world situation it was just no short of miraculous. So major kudos to Aaron. Um, on producing this. Uh, I also want to thank um, the others on the creative and communications team, um, Karina Basiglio, uh, Tristan Edelman, Cliff Alexander, and Sophie Jones, who all uh, each had a major role in um, not only this event coming together leading up to it, um, but also um, you know during, <laughs> during the whole thing. Um, I really also need to just give so much love and kudos to Seth Levine and his entire team for 
major, major adaptability, agility, flexibility, like on the spot, minute by minute, uh, and making our in-person conference a hybrid conference and then a fully online one. And just doing that with just almost like no, no questions asked, just rolling with the punches and making sure we're all set up. So just huge thanks to Seth and team. Um, I wanna thank Lev, um, who is um, not here with us in the room, but has been um, a supporter of this since day one. And in fact, um, a founder, the founder of um, really this program and getting this all in motion. Uh, so we're so thankful. Um, all the co-conveners um, that represented and supported, whether they're here in person or online or just in spirit with everything going on, we're forever grateful. And we hope to uh, be able to get you on uh, and have opportunities throughout the year to virtually present. Uh, until we put on our next um, unconference, whenever that might be. Um, I want to thank our students, our incredible students uh, who have been nothing short of amazing, offering up their perspectives and insights, not just during the panel, but every step of the way, and always kind of being our North Star, pointing us back to like the voice and the perspective that we're really, really trying to get at. Thank you so much for making the journey. Um, I want to thank our mayors our volunteer mayors and our innovators and residents who have just been incredible champions, not just in their own neighborhoods, but just over all of these efforts, coming together regardless of what's going on in their lives, whatever time of day it is to help with the planning and the brainstorming. Um, you really make the community go around. And to the veterans that keep returning to events time and time again, because you're finding value in this. We're so happy you're finding value in this and we're so thankful for you sharing that value and for everyone new who decided to drop in in this for the very first time and this is the very first way that you're experiencing shaping EDU. Just know it only gets weirder. <laughs> no, but really, um, thank you all so much. And finally, I have to thank Heather Hasley, uh, who is, has been my co MC. And I think co is really more of a relative word at this point because I've been stretched in so many directions as you've seen with our own communications here at ASU that Heather as always has stepped up in superhuman ways and really just led uh, a lot of the work. And then our fearless graphic facilitator um, who just knows how to bring it all together, right? Uh, with, with wonderful words and visualizations. Karina Branson, you are just amazing. Thank you so much, Karina. Um, I'm probably missing some people that I haven't fully thanked yet. Um, just know from the bottom of my heart, I love and thank you all. This is just the beginning. In the next few weeks, you'll be getting follow-up communications, materials, things like events being scheduled, lists of priorities and, communication, and com communiques going out. As always, our work is collaborative, so you'll generally be asked to review things or jump in or weigh in with your perspectives. So be on the lookout for communications from us. Um, safe travels home for those of you that are leaving from Tempe today, and uh, let's stay connected in the Slack workspace and beyond. Um, until next time, keep dreaming, doing, and driving. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Sam. you. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Thank you, everyone. 